What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as D365Geek, and today we are talking about Power Automate, we're talking about CDS Actions, and we're going to talk about the list records action for, uh, for the common data service. So again, this series of videos is on the common data service connector and not the common data service current connector, a uh, current environment connector, that works slightly differently and we're going to cover those separately. So in this video, we're going through list records. So list records, a little bit like get record, allows you to retrieve uh, records and details back uh, about um, some records that you have in your CDS system. But unlike get record, this allows for multiple records to be retrieved. Whereas get record, you are specifying a specific record and a specific GUI to look up and retrieve. This allows you to create some filters and bring back a series of records. So we'll take a look at it. So I'm in Power Automate here. I have a trigger here, which is when a record is selected. Um, and this is for my default environment, so my current environment. Uh, and uh, it's going to run on accounts. And then if I click New Step, I can go to Common Data Service. And then the third one down is List Records. So if I click on that, it's going to ask me for a couple of pieces of information. First thing it's going to ask me for is my environment. So again, um, if you are, if you may be moving this between environments, you want to choose current environments so that it's easier to transfer, else you can actually specify which environment you want to look at. So if you do have um, a couple of different CDS, um, CDS databases and you want to list records in one based on criteria that you're passing through from another, you can actually do this and you can actually create that level of integration using this. Uh, but in my instance, we're just going to choose the current environment connector here, or the current environment, um, environment here, so that I can return results from here. And then we need to choose the entity. So in this example, I'm going to choose accounts, but again, we can choose any entity in the system that we want to uh, run on. All we need to do is um, set this up and then either add some optional filter criteria. So if we click on show advanced options, we get, um, we get five more fields here. One, two, three, four, five, yeah, five more fields here. We get aggregation transformation, filter query, order by, top count and expand query. I'm going to go through each of these, but uh, I am going to have a separate video on some of them because uh, some of them are quite complex, allow you to do some really cool stuff. Uh, but we're not going to cover that in this video. This is just going to be about the action in general. So the aggregation transformation, this allows you to um, create an aggregate function to count up the records that you're bringing back. So say you want to list all uh, opportunities on an account and you want to tell me what the total um, you know, revenue is for those opportunities, you can create that function in here and instead of having to create a field in Dynamics or in CDS, you can actually get that information to be retrieved as part of this flow. So it has the ability to do stuff like that. Filter query allows you to filter this query. If you don't filter it, it's going to return everything in that record type, uh, irrespective of status um, or anything else. So filtering your query um, allows you to just get back the records that you want. Order by specifies the order in which we are um, returning the data to you. So in this case, uh, if we wanted to order it by uh, say the name field or an estimated revenue for the year field, uh, we can specify that in here. Top count is the number of records that will be retrieved in this step. So the default is all it says here. So if you leave this blank, it'll just retrieve everything. Else, if you want to limit this to maybe the top 500 or top 1000, if you have um, big data sets, then that's what you can do here. And expand query allows you to pull in information or pull in um, records from related uh, related entities. So you can specify that in here and then pull, pull data or records through as well. Uh, by default, that is set to none, so we're not bringing anything through. So if I, um, if I just save this as it is now, um, what this list records step will do is it will retrieve everything that is of the in the entities accounts um, now 
what we want to probably figure out is if it is retrieving data or not. So to do that, um, I'm going to click on next step, new step. I'm going to add a compose action in. And as I click compose, it's going to ask me for an input. So if I put the input as account name, so essentially we're just going to retrieve the account name from these list records. It's going to instantly put and apply to each around it. And that's because there can be more than one record coming back. So unlike the get record step where you'll only ever get a single record back, this you, in this case, you could get multiple records back. So it's going to apply to each and we're going to create a compose step for each one of the accounts that is listed when we come back here. So if we click on save, uh, and we can test this out. So I'll go over to my dynamic system, my CDS system. Um, in here, I've got a, a list of accounts. Um, so there are seven accounts here. If I select one and run the flow, um, just to trigger it. So hit flow, CDS trigger. Uh, and we're gonna run the flow. That's now gonna run and that should retrieve all seven records. So if we go back to my flow, and go to uh, this one, uh, so this ran eight seconds ago, it was successful. So when the record is selected, that's the trigger that we've done, that's all good. List records, we are looking for anything in the current environment for accounts, it's going to retrieve some information down here about, um, about some records, uh, and then in here we have our, um, we have our output. So or apply to each, the, the account name for each compose step can be flicked through using um, the arrows. So the first one that's retrieved back is the default account. The second one's the Acme Inc, SS Corp, uh, and it, it's brought through all the, um, all seven, seven records. Uh, oh no, there's eight records actually. Um, it's brought through all the all the accounts that are in the system. That'll probably be because my view um, shows a different things. So that's actually something very good to, to, to look at. So there's seven records in here. Uh, but if I look at all accounts, there are actually eight records in the system. So, so it's brought back all eight records. So irrespective of the view, irrespective of any data sets, it's brought back everything straight into here um, and um, and then given us an apply to each and, and the output for everything. So we could potentially use this uh, later on, um, you know, listing the records. Maybe we want to, um, you know, run over those records and, uh, you know, update them one by one. We can filter this, so uh, I'm going to show you uh, filtering in here quickly. Uh, it's one of the easier options to do, um, but I said I'm going to show you um, these other functions like the aggregation transformation in different videos. So the filter query, so this is OData. So um, if you're not familiar with OData, it is a type of query language that allows you to um, uh, get things out. I wasn't too familiar with OData when I started learning uh, Power Automate. Uh, I've gotten a little bit better with it. Uh, I'm still not great with it. Um, a lot of times I'll use uh, uh, tools like the XRM Toolbox and the Fetch XML Builder. Big shout out to Jonas Rapp. Um, he built this tool and it allows you to actually input um, input Fetch XML uh, that you write or you can get from Dynamics. Put that into the Fetch XML Builder, uh, and then you can um, click a button, and it'll give you filter parameters, uh, OData filter parameters already created for you. So it's a fantastic tool. I really recommend checking out the Fetch XML Builder by Jonas Rapp. Uh, he's a legend. You should uh, definitely use that. But in this instance, uh, I already know what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to put name. So that's the name of the account. Uh, EQ is that is equals in OData, and then we're going to put in the account name. Now, before I put the account name in, I'm going to put it inside single quotation marks. Um, the reason for that is that if there are any spaces inside of the um, name, it's going to error and it's not going to treat it as a string. So as always with flow, we need to um, treat any string data coming back as a string and therefore putting it inside uh, single quotation marks uh, will help Flow do that. So once I'm happy with that, I can click save. 
And what this will do uh, is that when a record is selected, so this, this default um, record that I was selecting, I'm going to get the account name of whatever I'm selecting. I'm going to put that into my filter query down here, and then my output is going to be based on this filter query. So instead of seeing the eight records that we saw last time, we should only see a single record this time, or at least that is the hope. So we'll try this out. So we'll go to uh, a datum corporation. We will uh, select it and then we will run the flow. So we'll click on the ellipsis, we'll go to flow, and we'll click the CDS trigger flow. We'll click run flow, click done, and then we will go back to our flow and we'll check the run status. So it ran six seconds ago, it's nice and quick. Um, we'll expand this, and as you can see, we've only got one of one. We don't have a multiple applied to each this time, and we just have the data incorporation there. So you can filter your lists based on dynamic content that you're passing in, or you can hard code the values in. It doesn't matter. Flow will still um, will still uh, understand these things and will still work with them. So it's really really useful. I use list records all the time um, just to retrieve information, um, see if there are multiple records, do checks on them, um, all sorts of things. It's got a lot of potential. So let me know um, what you guys use these for. Um, I tend to see whether records exist or not uh, and then do actions based on that. So that's one usage for me. So um, if I want to check to see if there's any phone calls on our account and if there is, um, then do nothing. If there isn't, then we're going to create a phone call on that account for someone to make a phone call. That's always a really handy use case. So um, what do you guys use this for? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, please like and please share it with your friends. It's always appreciated. And if you've not already, please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's always uh, always helpful for me. And finally, I'll see you next time.